<laughs> All right, hello, and welcome back to the Mon High <laughs> Broadcast Network. Not going to lie, I'm going to keep it honest. I've been speaking for two minutes, but th we're thankful for Landon that he's found out that we couldn't hear us. But uh, I'm here with Landon, Brendan, Ben, uh, episode six of Garage Talks. Uh, we got the Pardon My Take uh, Twitch up, Toledo versus Bowling Green in the MAC championship. Uh, I'm sure no one cares, but it's been fun to watch. Bam Bam Callaway leading the line along with Bubba Butt <laughs> and Roberto Roberto on defense. Don't forget about PFT Commenter. Oh, PFT Commenter, the, the, the kicker, one of the best kickers in the country. Although the, the Bowling Green kicker did hit a, a – was that a 58-yarder 50, a 58 uh, for a field goal. So 27-13 right now. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you updated on that if, if you care at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe we'll get a comment before we can turn it off. <laughs> um, updates on recruiting. Jaden Lucas offered by Alabama. And then uh, a, a different type of update. Uh, athletic practices suspended until at least July 20th. So a major setback in terms of coronavirus and, uh, and us getting high school football back. Um, we'll preview right now Malden versus Carolina. Uh, it will be week five of the high school football season. Uh, you know the deal for the Mavericks. Head coach Sarah Neesmith in his first season, they were 6-6 six and six last year, finishing fourth in their region, making it to round two of the playoffs. Uh, week one, they play York. Week two, they play Spartanburg. They got Greenville week three, and then they travel to Wade Hampton on week four. Uh, you know the main players as well. You got George Ford, uh, running back, James and Tucker, wide receiver, and then the, the two defensive backs, Jaden Lucas and Randy Caldwell. And then now we'll switch over to the Carolina Trojans. They're head coached by Will Owens. Last year, they were 1-9. The previous four seasons before last year, they were 0-10, so combined 0-40 in the previous four seasons leading up to last year. Their last winning season was 2011, which, is, which happens to be their only winning season in the 21st century. Two teams haven't played in 15-plus years, which is as far as back as I could find the schedules for, for Malden. Uh, they play St. Joe's in week one and Berea week two. I, I couldn't find any other games for that, so I think Malden is their third game of the year. Uh, their Marin players, they got two pretty decent running backs, uh, Silas Thompson, a rising senior, and Keithon Teasley, a rising junior. And then one more offensive threat they have is Chris Bristol, a rising senior wide receiver. So our thoughts on, on this game, guys. We'll start with Landon. This should be a simple. An easy win for us, as it should be. What if it, one winning season since 2000 is not? But I mean, they got two running backs, so we it will be cool to see what our defensive line can do. We'll just be able to see what else. So they're not going to be able to pass the ball at all with our secondary, as no one should be able to, because we got the best secondary in the state. So gonna and it will be good to see how good our since our passing game is not that strong. It'll be good to see how good we can do against the weak team like them. Yeah, for sure, uh, Brendan. Yeah, this should be an easy win for us. As you said, one winning season since 2000, which, I mean, they're 1-49 in, in the past five seasons. Should be an easy win. I mean, I expect to see David in at quarterback for this one for at least half of it just because we should be winning by a ton. I don't really see them scoring much. Well, actually, if I'm Neesmith, I'm putting a middle schooler in at quarterback, but um, I'm I'm not gonna go into why this game is gonna be a blowout. I'm just gonna say it's gonna be a blowout. See, I think we should just go ahead and start David from the jump, because I mean David's David's gonna play a good bit, but this this probably will be the game that he plays the most. Um, that's assuming Jeb gets a starting job, but well, we'll see a good bit as we as we did last week of of rotating and resting, because I believe the week after we got Bowling Springs. Uh, let me see. I believe it is. Uh, we I think we travel to Bowling Springs as well for week six. Where is the schedule? Sound effects, please, Ben. Um, I guess I'll give a uh, okay, score prediction. Talk about the fire. Talk about the fire. Oh, yeah, there was a fire in the neighborhood. <laughs> we just saw three random people that didn't really look like runners running by, and I mean... <laughs> That was interesting. We didn't know why. I thought they were actually getting some exercise, and they are just running through the fire. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, okay, that's all. Yeah, fire. Uh, now we're, I found the schedule finally. We do travel to, to Bowling Springs the next week. So 
we'll, we'll see a good a good amount of rotation and resting. Make sure we get no injuries that week. Uh, by the way, back over to the Toledo Boiling Green game. It's uh, we're into the fourth quarter now, so 27-13. Don't think anyone cares. Bam Bam Callaway is having a a good game. If you care about uh, 2014, but they are five seasons in advance, so we're wait six actually six seasons I think six seasons. So we're we're basically alive now. <coughs> Another good run there from from Bam Bam. That could actually be a good game. Toledo is going to be the number one team, if you didn't know. And Florida <laughs> State will be the number two team. And North Carolina will go on and beat Florida State <laughs> in the ACC championship. <laughs> and I'm uh, motorcycle driving by right now. Uh, that announced oh, Okay, what do we got? Trivia now? We'll, we'll move on to the to trivia. <clears throat> we got eight questions, a bit of a longer one. Uh, let, me, let me get Mark a piece of paper here. first. I'll be right back. All right, and now we're back. Uh, PFT commentator, the, the kicker, just hit a field goal, so it's now 30-13. But now we're here with real college football, and we got the trivia here. Uh, we got eight questions, as I said. Uh, here, we'll, we'll start it off with the first question. Uh, we got we got each each one of them has four answer choices, so we'll do A, B, C, and D. <clears throat> Which two teams compete in the most played rivalry in FBS history? Is it Auburn and Alabama, Ohio State and Michigan, Wisconsin and Minnesota, and Florida versus Florida State. Okay, your answers are Auburn, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, and Florida, Florida State. We'll go. We'll go Ben around. Ben. Wait, wait, wait. go back one more time. Auburn, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Florida, Florida State. It's with uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. That yeah, that yeah, it's Minnesota, Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, Minnesota, Wisconsin. And we all got that one. And right. uh, Clemson, Carolina is the second most played. Yeah, we who cares? Well, we've played every year since 1917 or something crazy like that. All right, so everyone got the first one right. Now, second question: Which one of these four have won a national championship in the college football playoff era? It's four players though. Is it Derrick Henry, Marcus Mariota, Baker Mayfield, or Jameis Winston? Uh, huh? um, I believe it was Derrick Henry. It's Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry. All right, four for four again. Third question. Name the Ivy League school that Rutgers has faced in the first game of college football. That Rutgers faced in the first game of college football. Is it Columbia, Harvard, Penn, or Princeton? Um, Princeton. Oh, yeah, we were talking about it. Yeah, it's Princeton. Princeton. Well, I, I got that one wrong, so everyone else let me. I don't really follow that. Well, that was just the first game. That's the only reason I know. I, I don't know. All right, next question. Other than Alabama, which FBS school has had the most wins over an AP number one, over AP number one ranked opponent since the polls inception in 1936? Is it? I'll, I'll just read it again because the paper dropped and that made it confusing. 
Other than Alabama, which FBS school has had the most wins over an AP number one ranked opponent since the polls inception in 1936? Is it USC, uh, Southern California, Miami, Texas, or Ohio State? Southern California, Miami, Texas, Ohio State. Uh, Southern California. Ohio State. I'm gonna go with USC. Oh, it's actually Miami. Really? Well, I didn't lose ground, so I'll tie back up here. Are you got all right? All right. Next question. Uh, this is question five of eight. Name the most watched college football game ever. Is it the 2013 Auburn versus Alabama Iron Bowl, which is which was the 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 kick six with Chris Davis? 2018, the the Georgia Oklahoma Rose Bowl, the 2016 Alabama Clemson College Football National Championship, or the 2006 Texas versus USC Rose Bowl. I can read them again if you want. Yeah, let's take take that. Okay, 2013 Auburn versus Alabama Iron Bowl, 2018 Georgia versus Oklahoma Rose Bowl, 2016 Alabama versus Clemson College Football Playoff Championship. Or 2016, 2006, sorry, Texas versus USC Rose Bowl. I'm going to go with uh, Texas USC. All right. So only one of these four games I actually watched, which I'm sure you know which one it was. So I feel like I matter in this equation. So I'm going with the 2016 National Championship. The 2006 USC Texas. In Alabama, I think, was second, though. We d I know we broke some record. All right, next question. Who holds the record for highest percentage of first-place Heisman Trophy votes? Is it Troy Smith, Reggie Bush, Baker Mayfield, or Joe Burrow? Baker? I think it's Baker Mayfield. I think it's Joe. We can go with Joe Exotic, Joe Burrow. Joey B. It is, it is Joe Burrow. Okay. You didn't have to get that right. You could have said Baker Mayfield. Go on with Brendan. Let, let me back into this game. Uh, I'll say I'm just here to mess people up. All right, so Landon in the lead, everyone else. That everyone else trail by one. We got two questions left. Uh, what Number six. Marcus, Marcus should be here soon. Other, another one and more bragging rights for you. Uh, you and Ben are tied at two. Yeah. I have one, so I could I could tie it up at all three, or Brendan could could get back into it if he wants. I I got NBA as our tiebreaker, so we'll we'll see that. If if we get to the tiebreaker, that mean that means Landon has to get the question wrong though, and that doesn't happen a whole lot. In the last five years. How many running backs have rushed for over 2,000 yards in a single season? Is it 3, 7, 9, or 12? Uh, 7. This, this, this one's interesting. All right, go back again. Read the question again. In the last five years, how many running backs have rushed for over 2,000 yards in a single season? 3, 7, 9, or 12? Nine. Yeah, I'm gonna go with nine as well. It's nine. Okay. Dang it, Landon. You could say anything. You just <laughs> have to go with All the right, same as me. Question. I knew it was either seven or nine. Three was way too low. Twelve was way too high. It was last one of those. question and preview. I got this one wrong. So, here it is. Which program has the longest win streak in FBS history? Is it Alabama, Oklahoma, USC, or Michigan? Which program has the longest win streak in FBS history? Alabama. I think it was Oklahoma with 36. I know one team won 36. I think it was Oklahoma. I'm going Alabama then. There's no point in going the same with them. All right. Well, bad news. Landon wins again. <laughs> Good Lord, Trump. Uh, it was Oklahoma. I, I picked I picked Alabama as well, but Landon 
gets his third win. That truck and and is back really over annoying. to the other game, 30-27. So we got a we got a good game right here. With with a minute a minute eleven, but Toledo does have the ball and the, Bowling Green has rhythm. no timeouts and it's on it's on Bowling Green's twelve. But we'll we'll just Bam 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 Cal. He just got a loss. Minus so. three yards rushing. Here we can just broadcast this. We got what a minute left. We'll be yeah. All let's right. go. No we're only, we're only twenty nothing. minutes into the podcast, so. No, he 40, 46 out. seconds. He's gonna try to go for another touchdown here. He's gonna go with two each side. He got a tight end and the running back is Bam, Bam Callaway. I don't even remember his quarterback's name. It's, it's like quarterback. Yep. He's just gonna run this down. What a what a lameo. Ten seconds left on the play clock now. You suck. Twenty five yeah. seconds on the overall clock. Takes a snap. It's oh, okay. Kate Shipley zone. hands off to Bam Bam Callaway. Uh, right. Eight yard play. rushing. They really, they really had to. Bam Bam Callaway. They, they better stop. He better not rush again. Fifteen, fifteen seconds left, and what? He called a timeout. <laughs> He's definitely going for it here. <laughs> Toledo called a timeout, and they're gonna hand it off to Bam Bam Callaway again, who picks up three. Hundred and fourth and second. Is he gonna call another timeout here though? Doesn't matter about the five seconds, seconds left. If it was just sixty nine. It would have been great. Oh, PFT for the field goal. PFT, <laughs> come on. Timeout. He called, he called the timeout. Uh, fifty, fifty burger. So no, no chance. I don't know. I don't know. S stat, stat padding. No. He should have went with the uh, what's it called? Shark wheel. Oh come on. Come on. It's just six, quick oh. slant. Six, oh my oh, god, it's he a threw pick. an interception. He threw an interception. No, no, what is he doing? <laughs> and then with the zero seconds left, the AI kneeled in the end zone after getting an interception. <laughs> <laughs> what? In we need sound for this. <laughs> he took a knee. The quote, the quote of the season. He really could have gone there. And he would have blamed on Billy as well, I'm sure, which would have been which would have been great. But wow, that was actually quite entertaining for <laughs> for what it sh it should not have been that entertaining. <laughs> but all right, we'll get back to the podcast here. Uh, what do we want to do first? We want to do coaches or region coaches, region no. trades? Coaches will take long. Coaches. So let's do that. All right, so nine weeks until college football returns. So right now we have the top nine coaches. All four of us have our top nine. I'm sure the list will look similar-ish, but we'll go we'll go nine we'll go nine nine nine. Each person will do their nine. Each person will do their eight, and so on until we get to one. So I'll start it off. At number nine, I got Dan Mullen. I got. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Or yeah, just because these bottom ones, yeah, the top ones should I be mean, obvious who they I are. I think it's I think it's really close, but why am I drawing? Between who? <laughs> That's right. Oh, who, oh, he was at Mississippi State yeah, when Dak was, was there. So he he made the first college football playoff, right? Or yeah, he made the like the he was number oh they were one they were number one for a long first. time and then they kind of choked at yeah, the end, they, didn't like, they? Lost three yeah, games. he he did really well at Mississippi State while Dak was there, but then he went to Florida. He's been impressive. He has uh two. He has too much talent not to be doing. Two, they they made two bowl appearances well. in the last two seasons, and they they're going to be near the top of the SEC again this year. They probably won't win it, but no. th they'll be near the top. So I got I got Dan Mullen at nine. He's had an impressive uh, last two seasons with Florida, and he was impressive before then as well. Uh, up next, Landon, he got at number nine. Nine, I got Mike Gundy for o Oklahoma State. He's done. He's turned Oklahoma State from back in the early 2010s. He's turned them around to now a contender every year in the Big 12. Which I mean, your rivals Oklahoma, which is one of the best teams in the nation. But he always puts up a fight against them with Chuba at running back. So he always is going to be good in that area. He always he's a, he's a good coach. He doesn't put anyone before. Anyone else who will always play the best, no matter what. For number nine, I'm going to go James Franklin from Penn State. He's made that team into one of the better teams in college football. He's had some great talents go through there, like Saquon Barkley. They have one of the most hype fan groups in all of football with their whiteout game every year. And overall, he's made that team one of the more respected teams in college football. 
Yeah, I've got James Franklin at nine too as well. I mean, what was the coach's name that they had the big controversy in like 2011? Yeah, yeah Jerry Sandell. That whole situation was left in a terrible spot and took a team that was just in a really bad spot. Ha- had a very bad, few very bad years and turned him back into a contender in the college football world. So I, I got James Franklin at nine. Yo, I actually had James Franklin at number eight. So, well, for the main reason of, of what Ben said, after the Jerry Sandusky uh, case, they had a bunch of recruits leave. So James Franklin, he, he started off pretty rough, but he, he's made some. He's got some good some good players since, including Saquon Barkley, like like uh, Brendan said. But he, he's he's really turned that program around. From they were in complete turmoil when when with, with the Jerry Sandusky case when he when James Franklin took over. So I, I got James Franklin uh, at eight. I also got James Franklin at eight for all the same reasons y'all said after the controversy or Coots leaving. He's built this team into a team that will always compete with the best teams in the Big Ten. It's also got Ohio State, the who always will be win or always is in the Big Ten ch- can't, not championships. He's all, he always puts up a fight against them. The only th- thing that keeps him down low is just he can't win right now. But he always puts up a fight. I've got Jason Day at eight because he was given an amazing team at Ohio State, but Ryan Day. Yeah, Ryan Day. With But I mean you wouldn't expect that team after their former coach retiring, having a great team, but to go back to the playoffs this year and have a great team and he just showed great leadership this year as the coach, he was interim for part of last year, and he did a great job this year getting to the playoffs with the talent that he has. And, yeah, I've got – I've actually got Brian Kelly at eight. I, I, a guy that I don't think really make you guys' list, but just – and I'm basing this purely off what the coach has done at his school and what you what, what you look at what he's done at Notre Dame. He's – I mean, he's got some better achievements than a lot of coaches. I mean, he's made a national championship game. I think it was 2012. <laughs> Uh, it was 11 or 12. 11 or 12, yeah. They yeah, and then, of course, made the playoff last year. He didn't really do well when he got to those stages, but, I mean, look, at there There hasn't really been many coaches, uh, that current coaches that are that have made the playoff. So, I mean, that just right there, I think that's enough to put him in the top nine and then made the national championship earlier in the 2000s. And it's not like his teams have been uh, have been mediocre in between. He's always had pretty good teams. I can only really think of one bad year he's had. So, I got Brian Kelly at eight. Go back to the the part of my take uh, season for one year. Bam Bam Callaway got uh, robbed of the Heisman. He he should have had the Heisman Trophy, but it was Bam um, Bam. A Morris out of Kentucky, uh, the quarterback. <laughs> but a a a big one in fifth place, Blake Bortles. The backup quarterback. <laughs> no, no, the quarterback of Tennessee. Oh, the and quarterback. he was the backup last year, and. <laughs> One thing to know about Blake Bortles in this game is he's African American, so a major <laughs> difference from the real Blake Bortles. But never seen a congrats black to congr- congrats to the fake Blake Bortles on getting fifth. But Bam Bam got got robbed, so that's that's the main point. Uh, back to the list. Uh, we're now at seven. I got Jimbo Fisher, uh, mainly because of what he's done at uh, Florida State. But he he started pretty well with Texas A and M. They they had a decent season last year. They were expected to do more when they when they played Clemson, but after the Clemson game, they they kind of went downhill as a season overall. But they have they have a strongish team for the for the uh, Big Ten, but they'll they'll be all right. Well, the SEC, well, you're talking Wait, about Jimbo, <laughs> Jimbo, Jimbo in the SEC. Oh, yeah, SEC. Yeah. So they'll be all right, but yeah. not he's he's not much higher. Most of it's based on on what he did at Florida State, but yeah. I got Jimbo at seven. Seven, I got Brian Kelly. That's because, again, he's done great things at Notre Dame. Although I don't like Notre Dame, but you still got to respect what he did, what he does at, at, with the national championship run in the game in whatever year it was, 12 or 11, and then uh, making the playoff again in 2018. Yeah, 2018. And then, I mean, he got blown out in both. But he still got him there with a lot of coaches still having, so I still got respect for him. And he still hasn't had much recruiting success, so he's still always bringing them up. At seven, I've got Gus Malzahn because, I mean, Auburn has been good in the past, but right now he has Bo Nix, who's going into his sophomore year. He had a great year last year, and he's just been building the program at Auburn. 
and I feel like they could be one of the top 10 teams this year and probably for the next few years just because of recruiting and who he's bringing in and just the fact that Bo Nix is a great place to build from a quarterback for the next at least two years. Yeah, and at seven, I have Mac Brown, and this is the only exception on my list where I'm not just strictly going off winning at the school they're at. But you just look at what Mac Brown's done. Took North Carolina, who under what was the Larry Fedora? Under Larry Fedora was really just a mediocre ACC pr- program. They were terrible. Well, yeah, mediocre for ACC is terrible. So they were. They won they, two they were games. A terrible That's program bad. In the big picture. And <laughs> Mac Brown has set up their recruiting. Just, I mean. Having an incredible, it's 2021 the class that they're just. 2021 is a really good one, but 2020 is pretty pretty good. Yeah, but 2021 is just a ridiculous class. He's Y'all got how many four stars is it? Like, yeah, he Y'all he's just two, doing a ridiculous job recruiting, and I I mean it it really looks a lot like what Dabo was doing in his early years at Clemson. So uh, different coaches. Max already an established elite coach, but Max just already off to a flying start at North Carolina. Yeah, I got my my head coach Mac Brown at number six here. Uh, if I was being unbiased, I w- I'd put Mac at one because I I love Mac Brown, but he he made s- he made some bad uh, coaching decisions, most notably th- against uh, South Carolina in the first game when he should have kneeled, but he went for another play. But we got lucky against that one. Also, we got lucky against Duke as well uh, when we we went for it on fourth fourth and goal. I think it was. We got lucky with the interception as well. No, no, we had to go for it against Clemson. That that wasn't that was that yeah. We Mac Mac did well to get us to that position. Yeah. So six and six is a decent first season, but Mac Brown, one of the best coaches because of also what he did at Texas and a great recruiter. We we've owned our we've owned our state, which is what you have to do. We're we're just lucky that the state of North Carolina has been so good for football in the twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one classes. So I got I got Mac at six. Uh, six I, Mac is back, by the way. Six. <laughs> Mac is back. Hashtag Max Pack. Anyway, at six, I got Jimbo. Based off what he did at Florida State, won a national championship there, was always a contender there. Then now at Texas A&M, I mean, they got one of the hardest schedules. They play Alabama, LSU every season, Auburn. They just And then pass against Clemson these past two seasons. They just have a rough team. But he always puts up a fight against no, every single – every game is always cl- – is going to be close other than like the past LSU and Clemson games. Oh, those are, I mean, he always puts up – he'll always give the team – he's a great coach, he's a great motivator, which is the main thing. He's also a great recruiter. At six, I'm going to go Mac Brown for the same reasons as Andrew and Ben. He's just been great with recruiting this year, and six and six isn't terrible for first-year coaching North Carolina again because, I mean, North Carolina wasn't a great team going into that year – but the fact that he went 6-6 six and six in his first year, he's really got a locker room presence there. You can tell just by how well they've been doing. And the fact that he's recruiting so well for having only had a 6-6 six and six season with the team is just kind of crazy for where, we at, where we're at now. Yeah, and I meant to mention it when I first talked about Mac Brown, but I got to say out of – I mean, take away Davos Swinney. He's definitely my favorite coach. I mean uh, – Yeah. And he's kind of a guy. If you if you play for him, he he demands your respect. I mean, just having that heritage, and of course, Dabo when he first got the job called up Mac Brown for advice. So that's always going to make me like him. Anyway, at six, I've got. He's like playing for your granddad. Yeah. You don't want to disappoint. Him. Exactly. At, at six, I've got Ryan Day. I mean, again, I'm basing this solely off the winning, uh, off how well you've done at your school, not really taking in how long you've been there, how much you've won, but just the time you've been there what you have won and one season got him to the got him number two seed in the playoff got him to the semifinal and I I mean admitting they probably when you look at the full game they probably play better than Clemson but Clemson was able to come up big late that's a really good start for Ryan Day and Ohio State I mean they're just gonna be able to build on what they've been doing from Aaron Meyer Ohio State's still in a great position Yeah, number five, I got uh, Ed Orgeron, uh, national championship from this past season. He's he's been around a couple times, but he he's made his name, remade his name here at, at LSU, winning the national championship. Uh, one of the few active coaches with a national championship. I think it's what is he one of four or five? 
Well, let's see. Dabo, Nick. Dabo, Nick, Mac, and... Mac. Ed. Yeah. Four. Four. One of four. So... And they're all they're all on my list. They, they should be all on our. I think they're all on everyone's list, but just a different order. So, oh, Jimbo with five. Yeah. he's on my list as well. So, <coughs> true. So yeah, I got I got Ed Orgeron at at uh, five. What, five. Yeah. yeah, five. Yeah, five. I got Ryan Day just because how well he was able. I mean, you have a lot of talent with Ohio State. Yeah, he had a lot of talent, which was a big advantage. But again, getting them number two seed, only losing three to Clemson, which and then they drove down the field on us, and only because of a bad or bad route, I think it was the only reason they really lost that game. So it was a very, he did very good his first season. I expect them to be at least in the national championship in the next three years, maybe winning one. And number five, I've got Kirby Smart because George has always been a decent team, but with him as their coach, he's. He's made Georgia the top team in their half of the SEC, basically going to the SEC championship every year for the past few years. Honestly, I could see them making the playoffs one of these years, but I feel like they would need an SEC championship just with how well the SEC has been playing lately, just how good some of the teams are. I feel like you need an SEC championship because the other side just has such good teams that even an SEC champ, if you lose the SEC championship to someone on their side, you still might not get into playoffs. This is this is five, right? Yeah. I've got Lincoln Riley at five, head coach of uh, Oklahoma, and just obviously take over Bob Stoops. What year was that? Was that 2017? Well, let's see. Yeah, yeah, he took off for yeah. Bob. He took over this for Bob Stoops. Year, so yeah. Produced two Heisman winners in Baker Mayfield and. Kyler Murray. Yeah, lost my lost my thought there. Produced two Heisman winners, took them to the playoffs three times. Three, yeah. Yeah, three well, yeah. times. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah no. Hasn't won a playoff game, but I mean, even then, he's like, if he could just get a defense recruit on defense, I could see him definitely jumping into the top three. He he's just got to set up a defense. And Big Twelve, obviously, something that's never really been known for their defense. It's always been a high scoring conference, but if he can set up a defense over at Oklahoma, they'll dominate the Big Twelve as they have been and possibly put up some better results in the playoff. Yeah, I got uh I got uh Lincoln at four. My my four and three are, are pretty similar. They're both young coaches. Lincoln Riley, uh really good for his age as as well as uh my number three is. I won't tell you who that it is. Lincoln constantly getting linked with a move to the NL, but he's staying in Oklahoma. He's he's produced some some good quarterbacks, Baker and Kyler in particular. He's gotten to the playoffs a good bit. He's he's owned the Big Twelve. I got Lincoln at Lincoln Riley at number four. Four, I got Ed Orgeron just because of this past season, fifteen and zero, probably the greatest team of the deck the past decade, maybe t- two thousand thirteen, four to eight, but still, they still produced a lot. He had, uh, I think, since he took over as coach in twenty seventeen, I think it was twenty seventeen was when he took over. They haven't lost the number their number one player in the state of Louisiana. So he's always keeping the players close. He's always doing good recruiting wise, and he's always he's a great guy to play for. You gotta have respect for him, even though you can't understand him, but still. At four, I've got Lincoln Riley because, I mean, as everyone else said, no, but he's just done such great things at Oklahoma, producing a few good quarterbacks. Even Jalen Hurts transferred there and was a great quarterback already. Now he's on the Eagles. I could see him being pretty decent in the NFL. The thing is, with uh, Wentz's injury problems, Hurts could become their starter for like half the year. And we'll see how he does in the NFL. But every other, but Kyler and Baker have both been amazing quarterbacks in the NFL. Great starters for their teams. And really, just re- he's been recruiting pretty well too. So I feel like he's a good four. <laughs> this is uh, starting to get interesting. But I've got Kirby Smart at four, and uh, the reason being, I mean, he, he's, I mean, up there with Dabo, and obviously Nick Saban's always going to be a good recruiter. One of the best recruiters in the nation, constantly producing top three, top five classes, and 
just getting so many elite recruits and dominating regular seasons hasn't done anything. Ha- yeah. Hasn't won any big trophies. Hasn't won an SEC championship. Hasn't won a national championship. Until he can win something big, I can't really consider him a top three coach. Well, for like the, this is like a third time in a row that my number, th- my, that my one but bu- lower than you has been the one next to you because I got I got Kirby again. I got I got Kirby. Um, like Ben said, he's he's been pretty good. He he's a young coach at, like Lincoln Riley, but defense is always good. Offense almost always disappointing, but they they're still usually a a top ten team. They they're only really bad loss. I think they're only really bad loss. South Carolina was the main one. Other than that, they would have made the playoff again. Uh, usually fighting up there near the near the top of the SEC. A good recruiter, very good recruiter. They always got uh, good classes. They got another one coming in, as always. Maybe they'll figure out what to do with the quarterback position and get a, a more consistent quarterback because they haven't had one in a in a good bit. I can't even remember who the last the last one was. That was from from yeah from probably. But yeah, I got I got Kirby at, at number three. Three, I got Mac. I put him extremely high. Just so Texas, what he did there, this is just incre- simply incredible for whatever reason. You like to take it. He did everything at Texas again. What he's doing, number two class in 2021. I know he's in top ten for 2020 for those recruiting seasons, and I expect him to be in the ACC championship for the next two years easily, playing Clemson. And I expect that'll be a good game. I expect them to have two 10 win seasons. I feel like they're just going to do great at their school. He's going to do great, and he's going to be he's going to be a much respected coach like he was at Texas. I've got Edo at three just because, I mean, he had one of the best teams in college football in the past decade or two last year. Last year going 15-0, and winning the national championship. You really can't understate. Joe Burrow was a backup at Ohio State, and Edo just trusted him right when he got to LSU, made him into the first pick of the NFL draft that – he became and a leader of the team into the national championship that they ended up winning. Yeah, at three I've got Eddie O as well. I mean, not not really a uh, guy that commands respect in the locker room, just like Mac Brown, just like uh, I, I mean, he commands his respect. I mean, just an elite coach. Does got to LSU, did things his way, didn't just follow the. Set up that Les Miles created, brought in his own offense, brought in his own coordinators, and he, he's seeing his rewards. The question is, I mean, I, I feel like I kind of took a shot putting him at three, but it, it depends on how long he can hold being one of the more elite coaches in college football. And now the fire trucks are finally starting to leave. Marcos, uh, he showed his entrance by trying to get the fire truck to honk, and he actually did honk. Uh, so now we got our top two. I think all our top two will will probably be the same. I got Nick Saban at two. Really, no explanation. To, he's we all got we, did we all have the top one, the top two. We all got Nick at two, and we all got Dabo at one. Yeah. If, if you can say what well, you, you should, you should know why. There. The main reason I put ben, Dabo ben will, ben above will explain. above Nick. Re, name re, main reason before fifth before he, they turned fifty. Dabo won two championships. Nick Saban won one, and Bear Bryant won zero. So they, that was doing things that younger coaches haven't been able to do, which I feel like will translate when in Dabo's later years, so he'll be able to win more and more championships. Now nah, we're good. All right. Sound effects. Uh, so my my reasoning for one and two, just not, not even using stats, I, I've got two main reasons. One, the consistency that Dabo's had since they both became elite coaches. Since 2014, or s- since 2015, Dabo has not had a regular season where he lost more than one game. Nick Saban has had what two? Season. Simple, simple stat there. And then on top of that, look at—I mean, Dabo. In my opinion, has been a better recruiter. That's that's up for debate, though. But the main thing is, you look at their at their coaching staffs. Dabo has held his coaching staff. Other than obviously, he fired Kevin Steele after the. Uh, we're not going to talk about it, the game in West Virginia. But Brent game. Venables has been there ever since, established himself as the best assistant coach in college football. N- no argument there. Not even, n- nobody even close. 
and then on top of that he's held what's the guy's name tony what's tony o elliott or on top of that he's held what's the guy's name tony what's tony o elliott or uh yeah tony elliott so or, tony, tony or, elliott just left oh no push. no the guy that just left was um just scott he That's just went to U at ucf yeah. or usf to be head coach there so jeff scott just left but he's still keeping tony elliott as his offensive coordinator yeah. and I mean, even when he gets past that, his smaller coaches, he's but been able to hold them. And not only that, he's brought in guys from his program yeah. that, that he coached to be assistant coaches. I mean, he, he set up such a good foundation. He's done things the right way. He's done things his way and established himself as the best coach in college football. Yeah. The thing is about Dabo, he, like, he will see the potential in players instead of what people are doing like right now. He sees potential in like uh, Nolan Turner, who had the game-winning interception against um, Ohio State. He was wasn't even starting. Yeah. He was a two-star, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I think he was a two-star. One thing I saw, but I mean, still, he wasn't that. He shouldn't have been here. He but Dabo saw recruit. the potential. Well, yeah. yeah. But then, Dabo knew his dad. Yeah. But so he got Dabba invited to. He got invited to a game. He yeah. saw him. Offered him scholarship because of the times, yeah. and then he just made that. No one turned. Just made like the game that, saving. I mean, stealing Justin Ross out of Alabama. Yeah. Stealing the best recruit out of Alabama. Stealing the best recruit out of uh, out of Louisiana. Getting quarterbacks Those are two out of you Georgia. Don't do. The Stealing best the best recruit out of Georgia. Yeah, those are three Lawrence things you don't Sean do. Watson. Stealing the best rec recruit out of California. Yeah. All from South Carolina. He almost even went to UCF. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and he's, I mean, he's getting players from freaking Canada Choice. to come down here and play for us yeah. with Aju Aju, the new freshman. Taking a uh, Troy Celito from uh, Ohio State. I mean, he he's I just going. He, he's not just getting the best recruits for out of his pipeline states, which would be Florida and South Carolina and Georgia and North Carolina. He oh. he's taking recruits from wherever he wants to. It's something that not many coaches can do. Because Dabo always, I mean, the, the slogan for Clemson is the best is the standard. And that's what Dabo believes. He does that. And he always will make sure you're going to respect Dabo for what he does. No, he doesn't. Don't. That was just weird. All right, well, we'll, we'll move on before Marcos makes any, <laughs> makes yeah. any more enemies. All right, next up, next Ow. up, next up. Uh, we got a uh, hypothetical region trade. So what what I set up here is uh, there's four regions in the upper state for 5A. Uh, obviously, one, two, three, and four. I'll read off those right now. Region one is Malden's region. You got Hillcrest, J.L. Man, T.O. Hannah, Woodmont, and Malden. Region two, Burns, Dorman, Riverside, Spartanburg, and Wade Hampton. Region three is Bowling Springs, Clover, Fort Mill, Gaffney, and Nation Ford. And then Region 4 is Blythewood, Northwestern, Ridgeview, Rock Hill, and Spring Valley. So what we're going to do here is each region will lose one team and gain one team. So all regions will still have five teams, but we will decide who moves where. I'll start it off. Well, we'll let someone else. We'll let, some, we'll let Ben start it off. Marcus is not prepared. We'll, we'll let Ben start it off. Okay, so starting in Region 1, I'm swapping out uh, Chapman for T.L. Hanna just to bring Coach Cab back to the region. All right, you're not running away from all in, on my watch. All right, the, it's going to set up the game, Chapman and Malden, Nee Smith versus Coach Cab. <laughs> I mean, come on, can you ask for anything more? That's uh, I got Chapman swapping with T.L. Hanna. I moved Chapman as well, except I moved them for um, Woodmont, just because Woodmont's always... Yeah, so the only reason I actually swapped Woodmont and s or T.L. Hannah instead of Woodmont is because I know somebody who plays basketball for Woodmont, so I, I want to <laughs> get that broadcast done. Still, I would still pick, still pick um, whatever I said, Woodmont to be the, be there s against each Chapman or, yeah, Chapman and Malden play. Cab and Neesmith just to see see how, di how much Neesmith actually took from playing with Coach Cap, see how much he actually took from him and see how like similar the games would be. And on top of that, um, it's preserving a rubber with Hillcrest and Woodmont. I mean, uh, Woodmont is to Hillcrest as man is to us. I mean, th there's definitely a rivalry there. Maybe not as strong as Hillcrest and Malden, but there is a rivalry there. Except we beat man all the time, and it's it's not usually close. Woodmont, Woodmont and Hillcrest are usually close. We are technically rivals. Like well, we are. We are rivals. Secondary rivals. Like yeah. It's like it's like North Carolina and NC State, and and not really as much Clemson and South Carolina because Clemson and South Carolina are each other's main rivals. Hmm. Yeah, true, true. It's like it's like the big brother, little brother, little brother. <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> Alright, and then for my uh, Region 1 trade, I added Blythewood, uh, one of the best basketball teams. They got a uh, big recruit. I forgot his name. Uh, he's a rising junior. He's a national recruit. He's a four-star. The, the best player out of out of um out of South Carolina for his class, uh, we did beat him by a whole lot though. So that was that was encouraging when we saw them this year. They're decent at football. They were six and six. So basically, I just made us stronger for for basketball and the same exact level for football. There, it's not a big trade. I, I took Woodmont out. So I I was just trying to give us some competition for basketball so that we'd be hardened up a little bit going into playoffs trying to face some big schools. So I got I got Blythewood in the Region One. For Region One, I switched. T.L. Hanna for Spartanburg, just because Malden versus Spartanburg is always an amazing game to watch. Over the past few years, I believe it's gone to overtime the past two times, and it's just always a great game to watch. T.L. Hanna, we played in the playoffs last year, and I feel like that should be where we play them. Not really re I wouldn't really call them region. I feel like we have more of a rivalry against Spartanburg now, just because of how close of games we've had with them. And I feel like that would really improve our Region in football, although not by much. All right, switching over now to Region 2. I added Nation Ford, and I took out Spartanburg. Uh, Nation Ford, they were actually terrible in basketball this year. But they were they were decent in football. Uh, they were a little bit better than Spartanburg. I think they I think they were 6-6 six and six as well as uh, Blythewood was. But they're, they're going to be pretty decent as well again. They're, they're probably going to be terrible again in basketball because they lost all their players uh, once again. But... You all right there? <laughs> all right, yeah, I got Nation Forward in the Region 2. Spartanburg leaving. I won't tell you where they're going yet, though. Landon, you're up next uh, with Region 2. Region 2, I swapped out Riverside for Clo or Clover coming in for Riverside because then you would see if for football you had Clover, and Dorm Clover, Dorman, and Burns and Spartanburg, which would for – or Spartanburg's not as good, but they're still a pretty decent football team. But then – Burns and Dorman and Clover, that would be just three great games. Or, or they would add up to three because they would all play each other. But still, that would be a great thing to see. Just And then, of course, they got a good basketball team as well. It would be fun to see how good the basketball would Because all the games would be close, so it would easily be fun games to watch. So, Region 2, I really just wanted to change into a region of death. I mean, just make it the toughest possible region that there is. So, it's going to be region of death for football and, and basketball. So, for starters, we've got Greenville swapping with Riverside. That's, I mean, Greenville, I mean, definitely up there in for favorites in the 4A football state championship. And then also an elite basketball program. So, swapping them with li Riverside is definitely going to make both the football and basketball seem stronger. And then there will be another swap coming to Region 2. I just feel, I just feel like Riverside more belongs in, in 4A than – 5A. They were good in basketball two years ago, but last year they were bad, and they're always bad at football. They just seem more like a f like a 4A school. Well, that that's that's what matters <laughs> overall. But but <laughs> Brendan up next. Okay, I already took Spartanburg out of Region Two, and I put Blythewood in just because basketball would be really competitive. Dormans are competitive. always a great team. Burns is normally decent, and then the rest of the regions kind of just. It is what, yeah, it's kind of average for, like, everything. Riverside's never really great. Wade Hampton's never really great. So had to put some one decent team in. Because football, Burns and Dorman are always going to be dormant. It really doesn't matter who you stick in there. Gaffney's not in that region yet, though. All right, next up, Region 3. Uh, I, I moved Spartanburg into Region 3. Uh, I just feel like that'd be, that, that's going to be competitive um, between Gaffney and Spartanburg. More of when when you think of Spartanburg rivalries, you think of uh, Burns and Dorman. But but next up, a close one is Spartanburg and Bowling Springs. Uh, they don't like each other as well. You got Gaffney in there as well, and then Clover will, will be the main one out of there. But it, it's basically just a, a fight between Gaffney and well, Gaffney will be decent, but Gaffney and Clover will fight well. Bowling Springs and Spartanburg will fight well. Nation Ford, we'll just be in. <laughs> Um, but yeah, th I I like that region a lot. That that would be an entertaining one if it were to happen. Spartanburg in, into Region Three is what I got there. Region Three, I'm I moved Greenville in front of Fort Mi or replace the or replace Fort Mill with Greenville because again it would be, I mean these 
what if the other changes didn't happen? It would be Clover and Greenville. That will be a good football matchup. Not as good for basketball, but still a pretty good football. And then you also got Gaffney in there as well. So that would make a pretty good region for football and a little bit for basketball, but mainly for football. Yeah, and region region three, I'm trying to turn into as strong a football region as I can. So I'm bringing, I'm dipping down to three A again. I'm bringing Wren up, and swapping them with Fort Mill, which is going to make that region Boiling Springs, Clover, Wren, Gaffney, and Nation Ford. I mean, four traditional powerhouses in football in that region. So it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, I would move T. L. Hanna into that one. Four, I'm. I'm going to say I'm not quite positive to take out here. I might have to go Nation Ford. I mean, Nation Ford's got a good basketball team, but I feel like having T.L., Hannah, Gaffney, and Boiling Springs in the same division would be fun for football just to watch. All right. Uh, now the the final region, and I'll admit this is, this is probably the region that we all know the least about. <laughs> yeah. um, the only team I, I – out of here that I've seen play live that I have left in here is Spring Valley, and that was a while ago. They, they've lost a lot since then. They have a really nice football stadium, I will say, based off the L.A. Coliseum, yeah. <coughs> but I I had, sadly for that region, just make it all the more boring. I got I, I moved Woodmont into there, <laughs> and I replaced them with Blythewood. So they lost they lost probably their main school and replaced them with a, a mediocre school. So I'm sorry if you're a Region 4 fan, but... You're probably not listening. You're probably not listening. <laughs> well, you have you have the people that just listen to it, that that they just they're just fans of that one conference, and maybe there's going to be some of them out here, but I, I doubt it. Uh, Landon, up next. For I moved I moved Ren in for uh, Ridgeview, just to see it would be so you, what football again? You got Ren versus Blythewood. That would be Spring Valley's all right, but still. Rand versus Blythewood mainly would be a good game to see f for both football and basketball. So I would just like to see that play, even though I wouldn't, because Rand is always a great team from from the even their like D team and C team. They're always good. So it's just like to see that playing against Blythewood with all that. It'll be a good game. Yeah, and going back to what I was talking about with Region Two, trying to just turn that into as tough a region as possible for both basketball and football. I moved Blythewood for Wade Hampton, and that's that's more of a basketball move than a than a football move but that's going to make that region burns dorman greenville spartanburg and then blythewood so by far the strongest region for both football and basketball and it's like that and, and on top of that blythewood a very good baseball program so that i mean yeah it's the, of course the, the landon lucas home run yeah yeah that's true so, I mean, Blythewood for Wade Hampton. Of course, Wade Hampton had a really good year last year, but they lost their two best players, and they're not – so far haven't replaced them like Malden did a couple <coughs> of years ago last year. So, w Wade Hampton not going to be as strong and probably going to get dominated in Region 2 in real life. But in my parallel universe, universe, Blythewood, one of the stronger basketball programs in the state, is going to be in Region 2. I mean, I took out Blythewood, but I'm going to put in Greenville just because Greenville is all around an amazing team. Blythewood's good at basketball, but adding the fact that Greenville's also an amazing football school would really add a little more to that division. I feel like Greenville might be able to win that one, though. All right. <coughs> all right, so I think that's going to wrap it up. Wrap it up for us today. We actually ended almost on time. We got four minutes. Any, anybody want to talk about anything for four minutes? Talk about we, we have not talked about soccer, but but we'll, we'll, here, we'll, here's what we'll do for soccer. Uh, you didn't last know, time, nope, nope, wait. I just want to talk about wait. the Everton game because I, 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 someone said that Everton was going to lose and that did not happen. They almost, they should have won, well obviously. You, but here, here, wait. I mean, honestly, looking at the highlights. A great tie. Give, give, give Everton the trophy for tying Liverpool. All right. Thank you. <coughs> we we also tied. Uh. Here's what here's what we'll do for soccer. Uh, we got a week off. We won't be here. We won't have a podcast next week because it's July third, and then the week after that, MLS starts. MLS starts back. So keep an eye out for that. But here's what we'll do: one soccer game to watch out for in the week long break. We got. 
bro. Who is this dude? All right, Marcos, your one soccer game to watch between now and what would that be? July tenth, I think. Well, I was gonna go uh, Barcelona Valencia. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Because we all know that Real Madrid and Barcelona are currently tied for first place. Although Real Madrid has the better goal differential, so if they if Barcelona loses that game or even ties that game, it's pretty much over, and Real Madrid has the title. Ben, your one game to watch over the break. Okay, I'll go first. Um, Leicester, Leicester City and Chelsea, uh, actually Sunday in the FA Cup quarterfinals, 11 a.m. on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, that, that should be a, a fun one. Personally, I'm looking more forward to Manchester United versus Norwich. We should easily beat them. Uh, mm. we, Norwich City is the worst team in the Premier League, by yeah. the way. I thought you were trying to argue for there for a second, but oh, really? Pogba in great form, Martial in stunning form with the hat trick on Wednesday. Sure. Even even with a rotated side, I see Igalo starting. I see hopefully Angel Gomez. Lingard? Will. Nope, not Lingard. Uh, he can stay uh, in the training squad <laughs> uh, as well, along with Pereira. But I I want to see Angel Gomez. I want him to get a new contract. But overall, my game to look forward to is Leicester. Versus Chelsea FA Cup quarterfinal, and then last but not least, Ben. Oh, uh, can I switch mine real quick while no. Ben talks? I'm no. just gonna say I actually no. met Barcelona Atletico Madrid. Okay. Any, anywho, um, not that it, it it obviously doesn't have title implications anymore, but I'm gonna go with I'm still gonna go with Liverpool Man City, just because I mean it, it's always a strong rivalry there. It's it, it's gonna be an incredible game, and of course. Man City, just as consolation, they're going to want to stop Liverpool from hitting the 100 points, remain the only team to do that. And, of course, Liverpool going to want to hit those 100 points. Jurgen Klopp has kind of made it clear that he wants to hit those 100 points. So Shout it's going to be – it's going to be – maybe not for – maybe it has no title implications anymore, but it's going to be a good start for Liverpool on their n- new quest to hit the 100 points. Also, shout out to Christian Pulisic, who is playing lights out. Well, he's going to he, – he gets – Hate for being American in England, which I, I hate to see. I, I hate Chelsea, but I hate I, I I love America more than I hate Chelsea. So I, I still do cheer for Kristen Pulisic. But that's gonna do it here for us. One more announcement uh, about part of my take uh, football. 8:47 Sunday night national championship Toledo versus Texas. Sunday night 8:47 Twitch.tv backslash part of my take. Uh, you, you should you should nope. Tune in for that, no, for sure. Tune in for that. It's going to be a great game. No podcast next week. Next week. Follow us on social media at MHBN2020 on Twitter, MHBN underscore 2020 on Instagram. We will be back with a very good interview. Make sure you're here for the interview the very next week. I won't tell you who it is. It's a surprise, but it's going to be a fun one. We will see you in two weeks. Goodbye.